Welcome you, Gradzilla. Uh, I am talking to very eminent scientist, Gradzilla Pellegrini, who has uh, done a tremendous work on regenerative medicine. And I have some questions from you, Gradzilla. Good morning, and Good morning. thank you for accepting to talk to me about it. Could you tell for my audience, in a very simple language, what do you do and why do you do? Well, why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can start from why I do. I do because I want to solve uh, unmet medical need by uh, tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. Mm -hmm. I strongly believe that the uh, regenerative medicine can offer a solution where the standard conventional medicine cannot. So I strongly want to investigate in this direction, trying to replace body parts which are affected or damaged or missing in the body by regenerative medicine. This is the first point. I strongly believe in this technology, but I strongly believe that a lot of control, an accurate control of all parameters should be in place and cannot be some a simple attempt to, to rebuild the tissues. This is the first point. Second point, what I did. The idea is that we have adult stem cells in the body, so in the body we have some cells able to regenerate the tissue with the full prop power to, to replace and regenerate the tissue. So we have to identify them and to be able to culture them without altering too much their characteristic so make them able to do their own job outside from the body since sometimes in the body we have disease that impair this function that's the general point fortunately these kind of cells are extremely powerful so we can take a very small biopsy from the body and we have shown for example in the ocular surface but in many other body districts that started from one two millimeter biopsy in the right area of the ocular surface we can rebuild two entire surface of the cornea so in amplifying enormously the amount of material and making the patient to be treated and the, the cornea to be replaced by cultured tissue we have started this work in 95. The first two patients were published on Lancet in 97 with two years follow-up since we treated the first two and we very carefully observed what happened because you never know what happened in the body. After that, we realized that the technology was just a prototype and cannot be exported. So we work on the um, construction of a special scaffold and now we have a patent uh, for that able to make the epithelium uh, transportable around uh, Europe and maintaining the stem cell inside without uh, aiding uh, terminal differentiation or alteration of the basal proliferative layers. We succeeded and in 1998 uh, we started with a new trial with the um, culture the cornea on this special substrate. This was transplanted on patient in, at the beginning in two different ophthalmology centers. Then we gradually increased it and we reached up to 26 different uh, ophthalmic departments in all over Italy. And uh, we collected all the data. Uh, now I can say we collected that up to 14 years follow-up on those patients. And uh, we published uh, the first 10 years follow-up on New England Journal of Medicine. Of course, in the middle, we have done a lot of other publication and characterization of uh, transcription factor, regulating the function of stem cell, many other things. But I mean, the final point was on New England Journal of Medicine, the 10 year follow-up on uh, uh, the first 112 patient with a success rate of 76.6%. Then uh, we applied for the um, authorization at European level and the regulatory authorities at European level, the European Medicinal Agency, asked to review all the clinical data. So they send the inspectors to see 
all single evaluation of the patient all over the 10 years follow-up in three centers, the one having done more patient, uh, and ask for external expert to evaluate the percentage of success. The external expert, uh, looking at all the data, evaluated the results with a small difference in comparison with the surgeon having seen the patient from the truth, and they evaluated a 72.8% success rate. Anyway, it was very good. So the product was finally approved at European level and uh, with the only uh, point that we, they want to see an European tri uh, clinical trial showing that the medical background in different member states is sufficient to give the same results in all the countries. And this is a point where we are now. We are negotiating the cost of this technology, but at the meantime in Italy we have access to free uh, uh, request for cost uh, with the special procedures so we can sell from really at beginning. Thank you very much for this detailed description and I am very excited about the kind of work you do because it's not only pure science or pushing the frontiers of the science, you are in a layman language trying to create a vision for the blind people who have no hope yeah. and uh, this uh, kind of scientific documentation of high level in high impact journals leave me with very little doubt on that this is going to work. Now, uh, can you tell me something about yourself? How did you get to it? Was this the, your driver to get into this was your passion for research? Mm -hmm. Or it was the social cause to begin with? Or you wanted to make a big difference in the quality of life of human beings? Well, uh, it's a long personal history, you know, when you go on the motivation that somebody has to do something. Uh, sometimes it's a long story that starts from, uh, I mean, the beginning of your life. I was always fascinated by medicine, always. Mm. And uh, I was thinking all my, all, I mean, from when I, from, the time of four years old, I was uh, intended to become a medical doctor, to treat the people. Uh, for me, it's something uh, really special, really important. I mean, to solve some unsolved problem is one of the best things that you can do, I think. And uh, for uh, a lot of reasons that I don't want to mention now, at the time I was going to the, ready to go at the university, at the, last, la, at the very last moment, I couldn't go to um, Faculty of Medicine. Not because I was not accepted. I couldn't choose, uh, at that time, uh, the Faculty of Medicine. So I couldn't start my education in uh, medicine. And I start to study uh, chemistry. I was okay with the chemistry because it was a fascinating field, but I was always intended to use chemistry for treatment of people, never to build new materials or things like that, because the idea of medicine remained in my mind. Then I took, uh, I did some research just before graduation. I published my first paper before graduation because I was really fascinated by a kind of drugs that could treat the epilepsy because at that time I was working on central nervous system. And then I had the good results, uh, at the, uh, I took the degree, and then I moved to pharmacy, to the faculty of pharmacy, to become closer to the human therapy, because I was always intended in, uh, I mean, to go in the direction of treatment of patient. Then I took the second degree in pharmacy, and I start working in, uh, try to investigate, I mean, new approach, new thing. I want to know more about science. And so I went to uh, National Cancer Institute and start to work on cell culture and biochemistry. At that time was just the beginning of the time when uh, uh, Professor Howard Green in Boston developed the technology of uh, culturing skin for the treatment of burn patients and I was literally fascinated by that. Because this kind of thing can 
fuse all the opportunity. I mean, basic science, treating people, uh, using the expertise that I had to, to develop a treatment that cannot be done with the standard medicine. And I decided, I was really fascinated and I decided to invest my life in this kind of thing. Of course, I have sometimes some difficult time over <laughs> Everybody would have. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, uh, I started with the burn patient of the skin. 90 degree, degree burn and at that time was really, really challenging technology because I couldn't make a single mistake because for burn patient, 90% of the body surface, if you delay one day, you could have the patient died. So you, fe you feel the pressure and the responsibility of the patient as any, any other, I believe, because sometimes the patient die and you say, but I have, I have, did I do everything mm. properly? Could I arrive one day before and avoid the death of that person? So I start with the most difficult part. <laughs> Then we treat a patient, we develop a new technology even there, we combine the quantum technique with a different, I mean, different technique, and we develop a technique for treatment of patient having very good success rate. Fortunately, uh, there were some law in Italy that um, changed the regulation of the work, so less accident occurred and less needed there was for that. In the meantime, we start to investigate many other epithelia. And, uh, uh, then the, you got over to the cornea and other The things. first driver was where there is an unmet medical need. Right, I don't want right. to do just to do. Right, I right. want to find an yeah. unmet medical need. Uh, and we moved to several things. Urethra, uh, yeah. oral mucosa, uh, cornea. And the cornea was something involving me for many years. Uh, last thing I would like to know, because Vatikuti Foundation has a large community of young medical doctors. We have about uh, 15 to 20,000 people who follow us and we do programs for them. What is your message to the young scientists? I mean, the message to a young scientist, I have many messages. Mm -hmm. uh, first, uh, you have to qualify very well. Mm never be superficial, go deep, listen what the other people is telling you. Mm. Even if they seem stupid things, there is always a message that can be helpful. And this mm, drive to the second point that I want to address, which is uh, be prepared to explain what you do in a simple way, because this opens the possibility to interaction between different experts in different fields. Mm. We need uh, many different things, mm. and we cannot know in detail all the sciences, all the field of expertise. So we need to interact in multidisciplinary team with people doing completely different job, let's say engineer, physics, uh, uh, medical doctor, chemical, in order to have a good multidisciplinary team, you should be able to explain in a simple way to make other people able to understand what you are saying and to exchange information. And then, third point, put as uh, at the top of your uh, priorities uh, the results of the project, not you and your ambition. Your ambition is needed. You need acknowledgement because this is correct, but this is not the first point. The first point is the results of the project, not your ambition, otherwise yeah. it's going to fail. I Th am sure about that. Thank you very much for a wonderful message and it was great talking to you. And uh, I wish you all the best in making a big difference and uh, you are doing a kind of work the rest of the world cannot uh, miss to take a note of it. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you.